现在收看的是曹老师数学。Okay, here we have this function. Y is equal to the square root of x plus the square root of x plus the square root of x plus dot 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 dot. Yes, there are infinitely many square root of x plus the square root of x plus dot dot dot. All right, this just keeps on going forever. But anyway, we still would like to find dy dx, namely the derivative of this function. How is this even possible, right? Well, first of all, let's take a look right here. I wrote this down in black, right? And this is what I like to do. I'm going to write this down the same thing, right? In red. So if I have this right here, well, it's of course the same as saying y is equal to the square root of x plus the square root of x plus the square root of x plus dot dot dot. It keeps on going forever, right? I didn't do anything too special. I just made this into red. And now here is the magic, all right? The black pen ripper magic. I'm going to write this down one more time. As you can see, we have y equal the square root, right? I have this x right here, and then plus the next thing I will do is the square root, right? But now let me change this right here in red, okay? So I will just put this down as the square root of x plus square root of x, and because you know. We have infinitely many of these kind of things, so you get to put down as many times as you would like. All right? Okay. We have y is equal to the square root of x plus this right here in black. But what's this part in red? This part in red is nothing but just the same as the y, isn't it? So you pretty much have a y inside of the square root as well, right? So the deal is that I heard that you guys like to do the derivative. So I'm going to put the y function inside of the derivative equation that we're doing again. <laughs> That's the idea. Anyway, let me put this down for you guys in action. This right here is y equal square root. This is the x plus this whole thing right here. I'm not going to write it down too much because all this is nothing but just a y, all right? <laughs> in another word, we are just going to find the derivative right here, dy dx. But you see. The y is not isolated. You have a few choices to differentiate this. You can try your best to isolate the y, but I would like to do this with implicit differentiation. And before I do that, I don't like to deal with square root. So let's go ahead square both sides. Yeah. When I do that, you see, I will just be dealing with y square equal to x plus y, right? The square root. The square root and the square cancel, so this is all I have to deal with. Now I'm looking at this. I think it's possible for you guys to isolate the y, but we can just deal with this with implicit differentiation. I'll put down ddx all the way in the front like this. Now check this out. To differentiate with respect to x of y square, we bring the two to the front, and then the y stays the y, and then you minus one from the exponent, so you have two y to the first power. But remember. Y was a function of x, so by the chain rule, right here we have to multiply by the derivative y with respect to x. It's technical like this: parentheses y to the second power, bring the two to the front, and then we still have this parentheses y. But the inside here, the derivative of y, that's exactly the dy dx that we're trying to find. So here, this is how we squeeze out the dy dx, right? This is the derivative for that. And now this is equal to the derivative of, of x with respect to x. That's the usual thing, which is one. What's the derivative of y in the x world? Just dy dx. So this is also just dy dx. So it plus dy dx. Feels so good about this, isn't it? Well, here's the deal. We have dy dx on both sides. Let me move this to the other so we can factor out the dy dx. To do so, of course, we can just use the blue pen to minus dy dx on both sides, right? Just to show you guys the work. In the meantime, I can use my blue pen like this, and then I'll put down my continuation right here. On the left hand side, both of them have the dy dx. I'm going to factor that out, but I'm not going to put the dy dx in the front. And the reason is because if I do that, put down the dy dx in the front, open the parentheses. This notation looks so much like this one, but remember the dy dx. This is what we're trying to find. This is the object already. 
technical dy saying dy dx times whatever we have here. But usually, if you put the dy dx in the front, this right here will cause a lot of confusions. So don't do that. And the way to fix it is that to put the dy dx at the end of the parentheses. So we'll open the parentheses. Let me move down. Let me write down the 2y minus 1. Right? This is the minus 1. Let's put down the 2y minus 1, and then the dy dx at the end, like this. Much better, right? No confusion at all. Now, this is equal to just 1. So this is equal to 1, and now what? We have 2y minus 1 times dy dx is equal to 1. Of course, we can divide both sides by 2y minus 1, right? So now this and that will be cancelled here. And finally, we see dy dx is nothing but 1 over 2y minus 1. And now here's the deal. Depending on how you would like the answer to be, okay? Technically, whenever you're using implicit differentiation, it's okay to have your answer right here in terms of y. So this right here is totally legitimate. But if you would like, because this is kind of like a limit instead of a derivative question, seriously, if you would like, Look at this y, and look back, either the real version or the black version, doesn't matter. Just go ahead, plug in this to here. So at the end, if you seriously would like, I will write this down in blue and red. dy dx, it's the same as 1 over 2 in the front, but this y, you open that square root, and then you put down x plus the square root of x plus the square root of then plus and then so on, so on, so on, so on, so on. And yeah, so you have to hold this. And then minus 1. Depending on if you want to impress any girl or not, if you do, write this down for the answer perhaps. Right? That's it.